hard science. A race on the ice rink. The pressure's on. <laughs> Find out what gives jelly its flavour. Is it taste or something else? And how to rock and roll with a ruler and a rubber band. <laughs> Calling in a watery removalist. Spin out with a high-speed game of marbles. And a tasty test that'll leave you wanting more. And that's just a portion of the Backyard Science Smorgasbord. As always, we've searched the globe furiously for the bizarre, the bold and the brilliant. And yet again, we're here to deliver. So let's lift up with a bright idea from Sophie and Genevieve. You look totally enthralled in that book. Not. I've got an idea that'll make it a really uplifting read. Try and pick it up without using your body. No, no good. I said not using any part of your body. Sorry, that's cheating. Leave it to me. Wait right there, and no touching that book. I'm starving. Hope Mum left us something to eat. Oh, Liam's not hungry. Very sophisticated. Liam really thinks his sense of taste is so refined. Well, we're going to see about that. Here, put this on, James. Block your nose, Liam. Open your mouth and stick out your tongue. I'll put that taste of yours to the test. He has no idea what it is. This potato will get him. Yep, not a clue. Ah, uh, he's not as good as he thinks. Even the most refined taste is nothing without a sense of smell. Our tongues are covered with thousands of tiny taste buds, but they only detect the four basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty and bitter. More complicated flavours are enjoyed with a help of smell. So holding your nose makes it hard to tell what food really tastes like. Bet he's ready for that sushi now. Too late, sorry. Hey Jason, lock your nose, close your eyes and stick out your tongue. I want to try this out on you. Alright, I'm starving. Right, what do you think this is? Any ideas? Um, uh, chocolate. I thought you were going to give me something disgusting. Would I do that to you? <laughs> Moving right along. Let's go to a heavyweight story now from John. Okay, here's a thought. I know there's air in here, but does air have any weight? I've got an idea that might give me the answer. These old-fashioned weighing scales will do the job. Nah, I just can't get the right weight balance. Maybe air doesn't have any weight after all. But I still have one more idea up my sleeve. My plan is to find the centre of the ruler and hang it from this hook. Now I need two balloons blown up to exactly the same size and two pieces of string exactly the same length so they weigh the same. Right there, perfectly balanced. Now for the fun part. Look at that. The remaining balloon has pulled the ruler down, proving the air does have weight. It sure does. But we really only notice the air on a windy day. That's because we are so used to its weight pushing down on us evenly from all sides at all times. So next time I call someone an airhead, I'm paying them a compliment.
back outside. Cool, it stopped raining. Let's get out there. Oh, how bright is it? The sun's really stinging my eyes. This can't be good for our eyes, which makes me wonder how they cope when the light is always changing. Here, let me try something. Cover your eyes and wait till I count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, that's cool. The black bit in the middle is getting smaller now that you've opened your eyes. The black bit is called the pupil and it controls how much light enters the eye. When it's dark, our pupils get bigger so they can take in as much light as possible. And when it's light, they respond by getting smaller. This is called the pupillary response and it's designed to stop too much light from entering the eye and damaging it. Okay, my turn now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very funny. Ah, being blinded by the light of science is a wonderful thing, Jason. So too is the next instalment of Genevieve and Sophie's book raising saga. Bomb Sophie out. I've challenged her to pick up her book without using any part of her body. And the answer's got nothing to do with magic tricks. Right, cut a plastic drink bottle in half. And carefully poke a hole in the bottom. Now take some plastic tubing, attaching a funnel to one end and a balloon to the other. Now tie the balloon tightly with a rubber band. Trust me, this is the mind-blowing part of it all. Now push the balloon through the hole in the base. Now you hold this. I've got to collect the most important ingredient. I just know Sophie's gonna love this. Ever heard the expression as weak as water? Well, they got it wrong. And to prove it, I'm going to unleash the power of water on these pencils. Start with a tin and fill it right to the top with water. Seal the lid firmly. Stick a metal bottle cap in the centre of the lid so the pencil has something to rest on. Next, stick on the pencil. Take five more pencils and tape them together. Now put the tin on the pencil platform. Next you'll need loads of tape to shove the top pencil and the platform together on both sides. Now for the cool part. Stick the pencil can in the freezer for 24 hours and then check it out. Wow! The water's broken the pencil in half. Now that takes serious muscle. Unlike most things in nature, water doesn't shrink when it gets cold. It expands. Water is made of molecules that stick close together when in liquid form. But when it is frozen, the molecules move further away from each other, taking up more space. This rearrangement is strong enough to push the lid open, snapping the pencil in two. I told you what it was anything but weak. I bet Ben can't get the marble out of the bowl without touching it. Go on, give it a try. I don't think a stick will do the job. He'd be hopeless in the kitchen with those tong skills. 
No, the vacuum's not powerful enough. Looks like you can't rise to the challenge. Move over, I'll show you. Start by slowly spinning the bowl and build up speed. Give it a go, Ben. Yes! You got the marble out of the bowl without putting a finger on it. It happens because of something called centrifugal force. This pulls an object outwards when rotated at high speed. Like the marble against the sides of the bowl. Actually, you could say centrifugal force is responsible for many of life's thrills. It is one of the forces at work when a roller coaster speeds around the track and helps hold you in when you're upside down and feeling inside out. Oh, I'm feeling dizzy just watching our marble coaster. Whoops, right over. Cool, that's what I call a real spin-out. Now from hands-free marbles to Genevieve's closed book test. So let's see if she's any closer to her moment of truth. Right, I'm back. And it's crunch time for my idea to pick up Sophie's book without using any part of our bodies. So let's give it a go. Place a book on top of a plastic bottle. Sophie, keep that funnel high over the book. Steady now while I pour down the water. Look, the water's going down the tube. Hope my idea's not. Okay, keep pouring. Sensational. It's filling the balloon and blowing it up as it goes. Yes, we did it. Raising a heavy weight like the book with water is called hydraulics. This powerful force uses the pressure of fluids to lift or push objects. In this case, it's created enough pressure to blow the balloon and send the book upwards. See, I told you it'd be an uplifting read. Liam loves racing me across the ice. We're ready to go. Uh-oh, what's Christy Grace doing here? Go! Oh, she beat us again. Liam and I hate it when she does that. She just skims across the ice. Almost as if she's floating. She has an edge, too, to be precise. Those skates. I think it's time I let Liam into the secret of how Christy Grace does it. I get the idea Liam doesn't think there's a trick to it. Looks like I just have to show him. Blake hardly ever stops to look at what he's eating. He doesn't realise that looking is an important part of tasting. And I'm going to prove it. I've got three flavours of jelly. Lemon, lime and orange. Now I'm going to use this food colouring to turn things topsy-turvy. The red dye turns the orange jelly deep red. A little blue will turn the yellow into this murky shade of green. And with this blue and red, the green jelly is a sludgy bluey purple colour. Let's leave these jellies to set. When they're done, we'll see just how much we've tasted our tongues and how much we taste with our eyes. <laughs> John is always boasting about that watch of his. I need to find a cooler way to tell the time than him. There's an idea. I can make a sundial. It should be pretty simple to make. Draw a circle around a ball. Find the centre of the circle. Make a hole in it with a pen. Cut out the circle. And stick your pen in the hole. Look where the shadow's cast and mark a line on the outside of the circle. Now I'm going to need that watch of John's to get started. Time please. 12 o'clock.
Hey, what's the time now? Two o'clock. Time again. Three o'clock. Four o'clock. Five o'clock. Six p.m. Right, that's half done. I'll have to wait until morning to finish it. As the sun moves daily from east to west, the pencil's shadow follows a path from left to right, ending at the sunset line. This is how a sundial looks in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, the shadow would point to the south. I suppose you want to know the time. Now don't tell me. It's eleven o'clock. I think that's what you call being beaten by the clock. There are all sorts of ways I can make music around my home and garden. Here's my favourite. This is a way to drive your neighbours mad. So try making music with one of these. Get a wine glass and half fill it with water. Make sure your hands are clean. Trust me, it's important. Then dip your finger in the water and rub it around the rim of the glass. It might not happen at first, but keep trying different speeds. Cool, hey? As the glass is rubbed, friction between the finger and the glass creates vibrations. You can see them in the water. They make the glass resonate at what's called its natural frequency. The musical sound becomes louder and clearer the closer you get to the natural frequency of the glass. Put less water in the glass to make a higher note. Add more water for a lower note. Maybe one day I'll even be able to manage a tune. Hey, did you know that I can hold a pretty good tune too, Jason? Nothing personal, Dana, but the thought of you singing leaves me cold. Speaking of cold, I wonder how Joseph's going with his ice skating project. It's so humiliating when Christy Grace beats us like that. As long as she's got those skates on, we've got no chance. I'm going to show Liam why. Put that brick on the step ladder. I'll put this chunk of ice on top of the brick. We'll need some wire and a couple of these plastic bottles. You grab the watering can and fill them. First, we'll half fill the bottles with water. They're going to be our weights. Now you coil one end of the wire around that bottle while I do the other. Get the tape, put it around the wire on the handles. Don't want the wire unravelling. Finally, screw on the bottle top and we're ready to go. Put the wire over the ice. Hang the bottles down the sides. That should work. Just watch. See, the wire is already starting to melt the ice. The wire is kind of like a thin skate blade. It's putting pressure on the ice. The pressure makes just enough heat to melt the ice under it. That's how an ice skate works. The weight of Christy Grace's body pressed down on the blade actually melts the ice. That means she's not scraping along hard ice, but sliding across a layer of smooth water. The water creates less friction, so Christy Grace slides a long way on every push. I think Liam's got the idea now. And here's something else cool. The wire's cut right down into the ice, but it's not in two pieces. As soon as the wire's cut through a section of the ice, the pressure's off. The water refreezes straight away, so the ice stays in one block. Time for me to show Liam about another way to melt ice. Grab that broom and follow me. Good old Blake. You can always rely on his appetite. The colours are not what they seem. You can tuck into the jellies, but there's a catch. You have to tell me what flavour you're eating. Orange, lemon or lime. First, the deep red. Mm, lemon? Uh-uh, it was orange. Try again. The bluey purple one this time. Gone for the lemon again. It was lime. Now for the sludgy green. Our eyes and our tongues aren't connected, but over years of eating, we are conditioned to expect certain colours to taste a particular way. So when we confuse our eyes, we confuse our tongues too. 
too late. This has to be lemon. And I'm going to eat it all before Blake gets any. Sitting around in the sun doing homework is a nice idea. The girls seem to love it, but it always makes me feel just a bit dozy. Ouch! A rubber band! This could be more fun than homework. Hey, I like that noise. Sounded musical. I know. I can make a ruler guitar. When I slide my pencils up the ruler, it changes the sound. Hear that note? Hey, look. Hear what happens when I slide it down. Even further, and the note gets higher. Performance time! Two can play at this game. When the rubber bands are plucked, they vibrate and make a musical note. As the pencils are moved, they change the length of the rubber band that can vibrate. The shorter the length of the rubber band, the higher the note. Hey, you gotta hang on to your guitar to keep up with this band. <laughs> Daniela, hurry up and get ready for school. You'll miss the bus. I better hurry. Oop! Done! Better salt back on. good at this. There's lots of things you can do with buttons. You need a big button like this and some thread. Pull the thread through the button, tip it upside down and give it a twist. Then slowly pull the ends apart and watch what happens to the button. Hold your hand still after you've pulled once and keep watching the button. It unwinds, then winds itself back up again, almost as tightly. When Daniela winds the thread, she's storing energy in it. When she pulls the thread, the energy is transferred to the button, making it spin. Here's another trick you can do with a button. Uh-oh. Daniela, you've missed your bus again. Poor old Daniela. And she still hasn't sewn that button on. She's going to miss all that school action. Maybe she should join Joseph Leem and Christy Grace down at the ice rink. Liam is waiting for my next ice melting trick. I'm going to see how far this puck slides. Not great. Now if you sweep, maybe the ice will melt and the puck will go further. Wow, that was much further. Told you there was another way to melt the ice. By sweeping the ice, the pressure of the broom creates just enough heat to melt a thin layer of ice underneath. So the puck slides further on the layer of water that was formed. Hey, I've got another even better idea. You sweep the ice again. Hey, now that's what I call having fun. Well, fun is what we're all about here on Backyard Science. See, See you next time. time.